Hey guys, welcome back to another What's For Dinner. If you're new around here, my name is Amanda and I am a mom of three who shares what I feed my family every single week here on my channel. So if you're into that kind of stuff, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future dinner recipes. Now let's get into meal number one. All right, so first up, I'm making pizza, mac and cheese, and eggplant parm on the side. So to get started, I am browning up some pepperoni. I'm using the little mini pepperonis. I thought they'd be cute. You don't have to cook your pepperoni first, but I wanted that pepperoni flavor and the grease from the pepperoni to add flavor to my cheese sauce. You can just throw the pepperonis right into your macaroni and cheese later. Once the pepperoni starts to get brown and crispy, then I added a tablespoon of minced garlic and let that start to get fragrant. And then I added two tablespoons of butter and then I'm just gonna let that all melt together. Then I'm gonna slowly add four tablespoons of flour. You might need more or less depending on how much grease your pepperoni lets off. And I'm just going to combine that into the flour and mix it really well. It's going to be really super thick. And then we're going to add our milk. All right, then I'm going to add my milk. I don't actually measure my milk. As you can see, I'm pouring it right from the carton. But by eyeballing it, I would say it was about three cups. I just slowly pour it and mix it in with the flour and butter mixture. And it will be really thick. If it's too thick, you're going to want to add more milk. If it is too thin, you can always add more flour. It's kind of, you can't really mess it up here, guys. All right, so once I have enough milk in it and I let this hang out and become really thick, as you can see, that is about the consistency that you want. I'm gonna season this up with some red pepper flakes, some oregano, and some salt and pepper, just some flavors of pizza. And then I'm gonna go in with my cheese. I'm doing an Italian blend cheese from Walmart. It has Parmesan in there, some mozzarella, and some fontina. All right, and I'm using some corkscrew pasta, but you can use whatever kind that you like. And I'm just adding that to a baking dish because I am baking this. And then I'm just adding my cheese and pepperoni mixture right on top. And then we're gonna go in with our pizza sauce. So I found this ragu margarita pizza sauce at Walmart. I think it's new. I've never seen it before. I've never tried it before, but we really, really liked it. It had like an authentic, like fresh basil type of flavor. We really liked it. And I'm just adding a little bit into the cheese and macaroni mixture to mix in. You can add as much as or as little as you like, depending on how saucy you want it. But I just wanted like a little bit less sauce than cheese, just so you would have the flavor, but it wasn't like overpowering. And then I'm gonna take the rest of the sauce and just pour that right on top and smooth it out and then top with some mozzarella cheese and the rest of the bag of the mini pepperonis and some fresh basil. And then I'm gonna bake this at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. You just want the cheese to get all melty. It doesn't take that long, but if you want your macaroni to be crispier, then you can leave it in longer. I know I like crispy macaroni and cheese, but this looked so good. It didn't last that long in the oven because we all could not wait to try it. All right, so to go with my pepperoni mac and cheese, I am just making some eggplant parm. So to make eggplant parm, I like to slice it really, really thin, and then I sprinkle it with some salt and lay it out on some paper towels because that will absorb all the moisture in the eggplant so you don't have soggy eggplant because there is really nothing worse. All right, so I have some eggs and milk in a bowl, and I'm just seasoning that with some salt and pepper, some oregano, and some garlic and onion powder. 
and then I have some Italian style breadcrumbs as well as some flour and then I have my eggplant slices. So what I'm going to do is dredge my eggplant in the flour first and then into the egg mixture and then into the breadcrumbs and then we're going to fry them in some oil. I guess you could just take the eggplant and bake it right away but I always fry it first. It makes it so crispy and just really delicious. My kids eat it and my husband eats it. Everybody eats it and it's just really, really good. And once they're crispy on all sides, you can just remove them from the pan. I like to let them drain all the grease off on a paper towel right on the side and then we will bake them in a baking dish. All right, so the sauce I'm gonna be using for the eggplant is this Prego Farmer's Market Protein White Bean and Roasted Garlic. This was something new that I found as well and we really, really liked it. And I'm just adding some of that right to the bottom of my baking dish. So this has little chunks of white beans in it and it just adds some protein into your pasta sauce and I just really, really like that. It was a little more pricier obviously than regular pasta sauce, but it added some protein and you really couldn't taste any of the beans. I just, I mean, none of my kids even said anything about them. I didn't tell them and I mean, you can see them there in the sauce, but I really love the added protein in the sauce. All right, so then I'm just gonna layer my eggplant slices in there and some more sauce and some mozzarella cheese. And then I'm just gonna bake that with the macaroni and cheese until the cheese melts and then dinner is done. Remember guys, I write out all of my recipes in the Favorite Eats app. It saves all of your recipes all in one place from Pinterest, YouTube, your grandmom's recipes, your own recipes. It'll save it all in one place and then generate a grocery list and a meal plan for you. I love this app and that's why I use it. That's why I put my recipes on that app. So definitely go check it out. I have a link down below. It is completely free and that's where you can get all my recipes from. You can copy and paste the recipe if you don't want to use the app for anything else than my recipes. So go check it out because I don't put my recipes in my description box. And you are so 100% going to want to try this mac and cheese because it was so, so good. And this is my plate. We love eggplant parm and this was a perfect complement to it. And also, if you're new, I do share a subscriber meal idea every week here on my What's for Dinner videos. And all you have to do to be featured is leave me a meal idea down below in the comments. It can be just a meal idea or a full recipe. Everyone that I featured gets entered to win a giveaway at the end of the month. And this month's giveaway winner will be announced in next week's What's for Dinner video. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And my first subscriber meal idea for this week is from Ella. And she suggested homemade stuffed shell pierogies. All right, to get started, I'm just making my instant mashed potatoes and I'm using the roasted garlic kind and I'm just adding those to a bowl and then I'm adding the boiling water that it requires. And I'm just using the boiling water from the pot that I use to boil the shells in, just saving some water and it was already hot and boiled. So I'm just stirring that up and then I'm doctoring up these mashed potatoes by adding some sour cream because I love sour cream with my pierogies anyway. And I'm also adding lots of black pepper and and some mozzarella cheese as well. So this what's for dinner is literally the what's for dinner of new sauces. So this is the ragu simply alfredo sauce made with cauliflower in the garlic parmesan flavor. This was really good too. It sinks in the cauliflower um, into your alfredo sauce. You couldn't tell any different and you're getting some veggies into your kids. I really like this. I'll be buying it from now on. I'm just adding this to the bottom of my baking dish. And then I'm just taking my cooked jumbo shells and then stuffing it with the mashed potato mixture. And then putting it right on top of the alfredo sauce in the baking dish and doing this a hundred more times. Stuffing shells is so tedious.
And then once your shells are all stuffed, you're going to top with more Alfredo sauce and some mozzarella cheese. And then I topped with some parsley for some color. And then you're going to bake at 350 degrees until everything is all melty. I think it took about 25 minutes. Okay, for someone who is literally obsessed with pierogies, I have to say this was so good. I never in a million years would think of something like this, and I'm sure most people would use this as like a side dish, but we use this as the main course. It was so creamy and amazing that Alfredo sauce was really good. I definitely recommend it. You will never know that there are veggies in it. Your kids will definitely never know, so definitely give it a try. I just served ours with some broccoli on the side, and that was our dinner this night. I will totally be making this again. Alright, the next subscriber meal idea is from Harley and she suggested chicken and potatoes with green beans and when I saw the McCormick seasoning packets, I knew I had to try it because you guys already know how obsessed I am with those. The only difference that I made was I didn't do it in the crock pot and I made ours on the grill because I just did not have my craft together this day and I forgot to put it in the crock pot but this still turned out really good. Flavors were all the same, so you guys can either put it in the crock pot or make it on the grill like I did. Either way, this is really good. Alright, so to get started, I'm just adding my seasoning packets to a bowl. I love that she uses two different seasoning packets to switch things up. I think that is so awesome. So we're using the tomato, garlic, and basil, and then the mojito lime. I've used the tomato one before, but never the mojito lime, so that was fun to try. And all the directions are right on the back of the packet, so I'm just following those and adding the oil, the water, and the vinegar, and then whisking it all together. So we're using drumsticks this time and I'm just pouring half of the marinade over the chicken and then I'm going to cover it and put it in the fridge for at least an hour. And then I'm using the little potato company red and yellow potatoes and then I'm just going to chop these in half so that they cook faster and add these as well as some fresh green beans to the rest of the marinade and let them hang out for about an hour as well. And we just grilled everything out all at once. We do like our chicken a little bit crispier so the potatoes and the green, be green beans were done a little bit before so we just set them to the side and kept them warm until the chicken was to our desired crispiness. Um, I really loved the combination of the two seasoning packets. That was such a good idea. I really love this. This is probably my favorite meal of the entire week. My kids love the chicken and devoured it. They just love drumsticks. So I definitely recommend the two seasoning packets. Give them a try. I love all McCormick seasoning packets. All right, and the last subscriber meal idea is from Nikki, and she suggested roast in the slow cooker with carrots and potatoes. And speaking of seasoning packets, I wanted to share with you a roast without using seasoning packets. So we'll be using some beef bouillon, some parsley flakes, bay leaves, garlic powder, minced onion, oregano leaves, thyme leaves, crushed rosemary, and some salt and pepper to taste. So that's what it looks like all in the bowl. I used about two tablespoons of each, excluding the rosemary, I only use one tablespoon of that. Again, all of the exact measurements will be in the Favorite Eats app. So my roast was frozen because again, I don't have it all together. So I would recommend searing your roast before putting it in the crock pot, but because mine was frozen, I couldn't do that. So I'm just adding that right to the crock pot and then pouring my seasonings right on top of it. And then I'm just using my handy little brush here to um, spread out my seasonings all over my roast. And then I'm adding some red potatoes, some baby carrots, and then I like to add some celery for some flavor. I just like to chop it really big so that I can remove it later. And for a liquid, I'm going to start with some tomato paste and add about two tablespoons of garlic to that. And then I have about three cups of water here, and I'm just going to give this a really good stir to stir in the tomato paste. And then you can pour that liquid right on top. You just want to make sure you have enough liquid to cover all your veggies and your meat. And then I'm just giving this a really good stir. I don't know why I'm still using that pink brush, but I don't want to waste any dishes, I guess. And then I'm cooking mine on high since my roast was frozen. And I cooked it on high for about seven hours. 
and you will know it is done when you have super tender falling apart meat like this. You don't have to worry about your potatoes and your carrots being overly done. That did not happen to me anyway. Everything was all done perfectly. Nothing was overly cooked. Alright, so next I'm just going to remove everything from the crock pot so that I can make my gravy. It's important to remove the bay leaves and those chunks of celery because we don't want to eat those. And then I'm going to shred my beef and set my potatoes and carrots to the side. So to make my gravy, I'm just going to take some of the hot broth from the crock pot and add it to about four tablespoons of the flour that I have in a little cup here. I'm just going to stir this really well. The hot broth is going to make the flour not clumpy or anything. And then I'll just add that right back into the crock pot. All right, and here's my plate. I just served it with some bread and butter on the side and I'm just spooning some gravy all over everything. Now, don't get me wrong, I love seasoning packets, obviously. I love using like au jus packets and ranch packets. I love Mississippi pot roast. But every once in a while, I like to break out all of my seasonings and make a from scratch recipe, especially when it comes to pot roast. And that is it. That is the last recipe that I'm sharing this week. If you like what's for dinner videos, please give this one a big thumbs up because that always helps me out. And make sure you're leaving meal ideas down below for everyone to read and get dinner inspiration for this week. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye